This New Orleans Saints betting preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Circus Sports. Circus Sports is giving away fourteen million dollars this NFL season. Sign up in Vegas and play from anywhere. Get all the info over at CircusSports.com. We're also brought to you by our Patreon. Score exclusive perks, content, and contests, including our NFL win totals contest with a thousand dollar prize. Join today at SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash Patreon. Hey, what's up, you degenerate gamblers? This is Bill Burr, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kram? Dog. Who dat? Who dat or who day? They're who dat? Who, they're who dat, right? Who day is Cincinnati? Who dat at the door? <laughs> How are there two teams? One is who dat, the other is who day. Uh, well, who dat? Who? Which came first? Who day? Right? Who dees? Who dees? D's nuts. Oh, walked right into it. Right? Great D, D's nuts story. <laughs> if you're familiar with Hollywood, California, uh, the, where the stars are, the great stars and the handprints. Oh, which yes. by the way, I don't know if you saw this, but I put out a post of Kevin Costner's hand and footprints. Mm. Draft day coming up a week from this Thursday. When is draft Tune day? Ryan, August seventeenth, noon Pacific. You can figure out the rest of twenty four hours straight. So and, and what's Thursday? The, uh, what are August, we raising money for this year? I am able foundation tune in to find out more. We got some uh, w- Sean the first year ever. We have, not only do we have members of the charity joining us, but oh, we have wow. straight up heroes, not, not including me and Andrew. We have real heroes joining the show. The troops, the, uh, basically. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, look at the countdown better than is postman. On. Definitely. We got, we got, well, hold on. Let me fit. I got to finish this. <laughs> okay. I, I, I got to finish this, uh, this, this little bit of uh, where we started. What were we started on? I had a great tangent. Oh no, no. All right, it's gone. It'll come back. <laughs> It'll come back now. It was a great tangent. Maybe the chat can no, remind we were, me. We were talking about who dat and uh, and then transitioned into draft day. Yeah. You said you had a great D's nuts story. You started oh, D, talking yeah. about so Hollywood. Ho- Hollywood, California. Weird. Kevin Costner. So Hollywood, of course, back. I guess this is almost two decades ago. There would be dudes out there, much like in New York and other cities. Trying to sell their singles on CDs. Oh yeah, CD. And you know, I'm going oh, out to so lunch. With, going out to lunch with some of the coworkers, and uh, this just seemed like the perfect opportunity. This guy kind of leans in for the sell. Goes, "Do you support uh, support my music? Support my music?" And I go, "I'm sorry, sir. I only support D's." He goes, "D's." I go, "D's nuts." <laughs> Almost got my ass kicked by a <laughs> wannabe rapper on Hollywood Boulevard, but I did evade. Capture. Oh yes. All right. And Man. it was an excellent execution. M- Ryan, we got so much going on. We are we are in the trenches here. Thirty-two NFL team previews. We're uh started at what was it? Uh Arizona with four and a half wins, all the way up here now to New Orleans Saints. Recently just did the Browns, Steelers, uh both great episodes, Seattle, Minnesota, Atlanta. So many, uh, so many of these thirty-two NFL team previews. This has been a a ton of fun getting into it. Uh, yeah, uh, and Sean, what team? What number is this? A what number tri- is this? Trivia question. I'm gonna say eighteen. Right? Twenty. Twenty. Okay. Uh, I looked at. It, I was like, holy shit. We might finish the team previews before we finish the Lacroix stash. Oh, in, wow. in the old uh, office. So, for those who took. Uh, Team preview or LaCroix over team previews minus 200. <laughs> you might be in trouble. Chat is lit as always. YouTube.com slash sports game on podcast. Get in there, smash that subscribe button, get into the chat. Of course, uh, always reading off the YouTube chat live 46 Mach 2 saying toss a like for the intro song LFG. D Bettis saying LFG, of course, the Eagles fan. And uh, yeah, LFG. Uh, we just got a, a new weekly winner from our Patreon contest. Gonna announce that uh, coming up in the Patreon. 
Patreon channel only. Uh, Discord, of course. Sign up for our Patreon. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon. Got a chance to get in on the NFL wins total uh, contest. Thousand dollar prize. Of course, sign up today over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon. And a new sponsor alert, Brian. Or Ryan. Whoa. <laughs> what are you, my second grade teacher? <laughs> there is a lot of a uh, lot of Brian's mistaken. Oh. Uh, we got a new sponsor, Parlay Play. Again, uh, these are one of the uh, where you can parlay your uh, favorite favorite uh, player props, get a little uh, sweet boost on that, and. Besides getting, and we can th- call it a parlay just to be clear. Well, it has parlay in their name, okay. so I assume <laughs> I assume we can call it uh, parlay. Uh, play dot I O uh, sign up over there. They also have an app uh, you can download as well. Use a promo code SGP hundred percent deposit bonus up to $100. Uh, I will give out a free, uh, free play here, Ryan. I'm going to go uh, for the reds. Ellie de la Cruz uh, going against the Mar- Marlins. I'm going to go over 12 fantasy points. You can do fantasy points. They have a ton of different uh, options here, Ryan. Um, to get down on. So uh, I'm going over on Ellie De La Cruz. The dude's a beast. Super fun to watch. Parlayplay.io or download the app. Promo code SGP. 100% deposit bonus up to $100. All right. Let's talk about the 22, 2022 New Orleans Saints. Of course, they went 7 and 10 straight up, 7 and 10 ATS. Win total was 8.5. Eight, eight they went so they under, underperformed. The under hit. You had the under at eight and nine. I naively took the over at nine and eight. Maybe I'll. I'll You're keep Irish. It. You can't help it. <laughs> what do you mean by that? No, you like you guys like saints. Oh yes. Uh, you know, like my Catholic joke. I I did. Well, I just <laughs> didn't. I didn't understand the reference. Shout out to the saints. I did think. Uh, you know, playing Andy Dalton a big portion of the season was, I think, was a huge mistake by Dennis Allen. And to me, that's the biggest knock on this team. Obviously, bringing in Derek Carr is kind of a what, a, like a blah quarterback move. But really, is Dennis it? Allen. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I think he's an upgrade over Andy Dalton. But I don't think. I mean, do is you, he? Uh, yeah, I would say he's a slight upgrade. Stronger facial characteristics. <laughs> Andy oh, Dalton. I mean, Andy Derek Dalton, Carr. the Red Rifle, and better nickname, the Red Rifle. Has anyone ever bothered coming up with a Derek Carr nickname? It's like Kirk Cousins. He's just like eh, Derek Carr. You know, right, right there. You don't know. You're just kind of blah. You don't think you're going to get much out of him. His, his brother calls him number one. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Dennis Allen, though, I think is the biggest liability on the team. He ranked last among all NFL head coaches and plus EV as far like the go for it rate. I, and they had this in the notes. Uh, Cleve Analytics pointed out in the 17 16 loss to Tampa Bay, where the Bucks had no business coming back in that game. He kicked two field goals on fourth and two inside the Bucks' 11 yard line. He's just horrible at that kind of in game stuff. His, his defense, though, performs. Uh, defense usually shows up. They have a okay they have a defensive couple numbers line. out there, they have a couple of divisional rivals' numbers, yeah. and they. Uh, yeah, they they don't they're they're he probably doesn't get enough credit for the defenses because he kind of bungles the offensive uh, situation. He also had a bunch of bad defenses when Sean Payton had those good offenses. If you remember, somehow Dennis Allen every year was allowed to come back with the twenty eighth defense, the twenty sixth yeah. defense. I think if you went back and looked at his DVOA as the coordinator, not very good. And yet here he is, uh, one of the longest tenured. Uh, coaches, if you extend it back to when he was a defensive coordinator in the league, yeah, the DVOA uh, defensively was eight, offense twenty-two, uh, overall DVOA nineteen. Uh, Pythag wins was eight, so underperformed that with a kind of a mediocre schedule. This year's schedule, though, the easiest schedule by win totals. It's funny when you look at the win totals visualization, who like from wherever. It's like New Orleans and Atlanta are are some like somewhere near the moon if everything else is on <laughs> earth. It's just amazing how easy their schedules appear to be. Yeah, and then obviously a ton of uh, a ton of dome games in the schedule. Tampa in week 17 is the only outdoor venue they will play after week 5, which Derek Carr of course horrible in cold weather, 1 and 7 straight up, 3 and 5 ATS in degrees under 40. But are they a dome team? Are they a dome team? Um, well, they have a dome quarterback, so I, I guess it starts there. Maybe. Kind of a hard-nosed team, though. 
Yeah, I mean, I rem- like my, a lot of question my- marks, right? Because they Alvin Kamara, of course, it did just come out. He's going to be out for those first three weeks. Hit the over. I think we set the line at two games, so went over. Yeah. I mean, the six game thing sounded crazy, but I, I was thinking two. Does probably. it matter? Does it matter? Does it matter? The Kamara injury. Yeah, I think he. I think he helps he give that offense. Needle. Jamal Williams, Kendry Miller, both there. Yeah, I mean Jamal Williams is interesting, but he's not as explosive as Alvin Kamara, and isn't a good pass catcher. I feel like a guy like Derek Carr, who again I have as a like you know twentieth rated quarterback, something like that, twenty to twenty five. He could he I think could you know use a guy like Alvin Kamara, take some yards after the catch, some easy check down stuff. I mean, I, you know Derek Carr also horrible in the red zone. I Warren Sharp like. Uh, tweeted out a video of him inside the 10 yard line and just some horrific throws, not even including he's yeah. had multiple throwaways on fourth down. Well, and, and, I, and like not, not throwing into double coverage, like literally throw it out of bounds. Well, unofficial stat, I believe he had the most surrenders Yes, in the, or per game or something like that, which is essentially when you give up on a play, you don't, you throw short of the sticks, you throw it out of bounds on uh, third, fourth down. So yeah, I mean, look, I, I think Derek Carr is is also going from a like everyone is just penciling this in as a positive situation to be entering, and I'm not exactly sure why we're calling this offense a positive situation when everyone knows that Sean Sean Payton was the puppet master, and Pete Carmichael Jr. for all we know could just be some fucking archdiocese's kid. <laughs> Who the the church says, hey, pl- place this man into a position of power. No, I mean, all, all joking aside, I think the creativity around how Taysom Hill has changed uh, drastically over the last couple of years in in Sean Payton leaving. Like the further we're re- removed from Sean Payton, but I, I mean, the further removed we are from creativity. And when the biggest buzz n- that I hear coming out of this camp th- is that Michael Thomas could be healthy. <laughs> And are you following? And Jimmy are Graham you? is lining up all over the formation. I thought Guys, I thought you it. told me he was just signing to retire with the I, Saints. Yeah, I th- I could be very wrong. Well, here, and and they re-signed Juwan Johnson. They pay him money. I think I it's actually a very thought they, interesting move. I thought they actually did a decent job with Taysom Hill. He had seven rushing touchdowns. Uh, on on uh, what is it? Ninety six attempts. They're deploying Taysom Hill as an athlete. And, and They're just supposedly, not doing it and supposedly now he's going to be involved in the passing game more. Um, kind of crazy. He had seven rushing touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns, on nine receptions. So kind of a kind of a crazy uh, Taysom Hill thing there. Kendrick Miller's. I, I like Chris Olave. I think he's in the mix there for most um, receiving yards in the NFL. Just no, again, not with that quarterback. Oh yeah. One hundred percent. They could lock into him. Yeah, and you're playing a shit ton of dome games. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, you don't have to. I, you know, again, he's not Devonte Adams, but I think there's a world where he gets a ton of a ton of yards from uh, Derek Carr. Okay. I mean, I how close was Devonte Adams to leading the league last year? I'll pull it up, but yeah. I'm sure he's I'm sure he's up there. Oh, I'm sure he's up there too, but that that's like optimal situation. Yeah. And if anything, the Saints He was 15, 16, uh, Justin Jefferson, 1809. Saints are going to run the ball more. It does. I guess my counter argument would be, I, I think you're going to see this team run. Devontae the ball Adams better. was third. Okay. And I think Devonte like maybe Chris Olave could be a Devonte Adams. I think Chris Olave is interesting just because of the yards of reception, the ex, like the elite athleticism that he has. I don't know. Again, like who else is going to be like a a big receiver in that offense? Well, I it, mean, maybe Michael Thomas. They paid Juwan Johnson. Yeah. So obviously they like what he can do. Uh, I, I do think people seem to believe Michael Thomas, Rashid Shahid should be a deep threat. <laughs> I'm just checking in on the YouTube. <laughs> but but so we're clear. I'm with you. I I'm I'm fairly high on Alave too. Yeah. I I just I do wonder if he has like spike year like to to take down the entire league potential on this offense. I don't know because I do think they're going to play a little defense, and I do think they're going to be slow. They're going to. I don't think the offense is going to categorically change from what it was last year, which wasn't a high tempo. Like we're not going to run more than than uh, expected plays. We're we're gonna we're gonna pass rate over expectation. You're predicting not to be higher than last year. 
No, definitely not. Ryan, the YouTube chat alive and well. When I mentioned no one bothered uh, coming up with a Derek Carr nickname, we have some in the chat. Car Max, of course, with two uh, R's there. Forty six mantra with mascara man. I do, I do like that. No, no, he doesn't wear mascara. <laughs> it, do, it really looks like he does. My wife sent me this thing, or someone <laughs> sent me this thing that said that something like fifteen percent of of the youth are wearing uh, makeup. Males wear makeup. Mm. Sounds high. Uh, House of Car, like that. Mascara. This one, I uh, from Tomcat. I think could be the winner. Garbage time. Uh, so I, I really like that. What about too. Derek? Don't get lost in my eyes, car. <laughs> he just seems like a real beta, um, and he just seems like a guy that's never going to. I mean, how many playoff games do you think Derek Carr is going to win in his career, Ryan? Less than Eli Manning. All right. That's not a, enough. He won't win any. Does Derek Carr win and win a game in in the postseason? I was just confirming he hasn't won one, right? No. Yeah. When did he win one? No, that's what I'm saying. I off the top of my head, he hasn't won one. I just wanted to confirm because yeah, he that, might be a good guy, but I mean, well, that one that one Raider season where they were what like 13 and three, and then he broke his leg, uh, kind of towards the playoff game. Good. So yeah, that was against Houston in 2016. Didn't get in because of the broken leg, and then, of course, he was driving. Uh, you know, had them inside the 20 against the Bengals uh, in the uh, 2021 season. Couldn't and the get Bengals it done. almost lost every one of I, those games. I know that was a crazy <laughs> run for them to get into the Super Bowl, but that, that's uh, how the Bengals do. It. All right, so uh, should we just bring it? anything else from last year? We're kind of get rambling about about. No, I mean, uh, yeah, I got a bu- uh, Lattimore. I think missing a ton of games was was pretty big hit to their defense. The biggest thing for why they were seven and ten and s- instead of nine and eight, like I had them, was their turnover differential. It was horrific. It was minus eleven. Now some of that was uh, Jameis Winston. Some of that was their defense just not getting lucky when it comes to recovering fumbles. Uh, Andy Dalton had a couple. Uh, I mean, what was that game against? Um, Do you- Arizona, where they had back to back pick uh, six. Atlanta or Arizona? I think it was Arizona. Okay. But again, turnover differential minus 11. But you're bringing in Derek Carr, who second in the league last year with 14 interceptions. I was going to say, okay, so that what, when the, I. Th- the counter, though, is who they're facing uh, defensively. Yeah. They're expected to face the second easiest schedule of opposing pass defenses. So I think Carr may be set up for. Not I, success, you know but what, not bad, Derek. I, I read that, I saw that, and then I looked at the schedule, and I'm not so sure. I, I'm not so sure this is the cakewalk, at least the way they get. So, yes, by by the numbers, I think that's accurate. But this is also Derek Carr learning a new offense. This is not, I mean, we're seeing, we're hearing Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Like, there's been some times with some some differences of language or opinion, and it's like he's basically learning the save offense. That's why Hackett is there. So with Carr, we don't know how quickly he's going to pick up the offense. We don't know how quickly he's going to be uh, become leader of men. And I, I think he's saying all the right things, but yeah, I don't know. I, I look I look at last year and I say, well, uh, this certainly could be the same team. Uh, you're, you make good points about the injury regression, about the v- relative like fumble luck and just luck in general Tur- turnover differential. I mean, they're de- almost dead last in the league. So even if they get, I mean, even if they're like negative four in turnover differential, you would imagine that's a couple games, but the counter is pretty obvious. The counter is Dennis Allen doesn't know, you know, a, his ass from his elbow. <laughs> yeah. You know, he couldn't uh, fuck his way out of a paper bag. Whoa. Uh, that's that's right from one of my football coaches. Like Dennis <laughs> Allen is a, is kind of just a loser and he figures out ways to lose games. Also, I, I know it depends on what you're looking at, um, but their defensive line did finish last in pass rush win rate. Cam Jordan getting a little older there. He's 34. I don't know. Let's take a look at the uh, additions, losses. Talk talk Saints roster. And, and to me, when I when I just the close close up last year. When I think of last year, I think of that Andy Dalton uh, pick six where he's walking off and the guy's diving into the end zone. In the background. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great and, video. And I wonder why is this really going to be different? This team has been like rebuilding a slash reloading on the fly every year. At some point that they, like, you know, you know who in they, theory they should crater at some point, Ryan, they almost kind of remind me of the, uh, like an 
NFC version of the Indianapolis Colts, where they they're just kind of hanging on. Yeah, they're like, we're good. We have a roster. Just bring in Carson Wentz. Just year. bring in Philip Rivers. Just bring in Matt Ryan. All we need is just a little stability uh, quarterback. I would say I would even go further. I think we're gonna look back on the idea of paying like more than like. Yeah, and and also Derek Carr got benched by Josh McDaniels. I mean, he well, was some of that was Josh McDaniels' fault, and some of it was them wanting to look get a look at Stidham, and they knew they were getting rid of him anyway. But yeah, uh, he wasn't playing that great. So. No, and and I think just the idea of paying anything more than like medium dollar for an aging veteran quarterback is probably going to be something we look back on and say, this isn't positive EV because you're not getting a rookie contract, but you're getting a quarterback that's performing at just barely above rookie level. Mm. And so, yeah, I mean, it, look, probably good to be a fan of the saints because every year you feel good about your situation. I mean, when's the last time the saints were picked to go last in their division? Probably a very, very long time. But when's the last time you felt like the saints could do anything more than maybe win 10 games and win their division also probably uh, definitely since Sean Payton left. Yeah, which I mean, by the way, I, do we should we look any deeper into the idea that Sean Payton that this is all some sort of suspension from the league for their for their <laughs> involvement in the uh, uh, well, Ryan, stay tuned for our MLD, aka oh no. most likely DJ and wait, do we wait? Do we have the same one? We have new music for our MLD. Well, Ryan, I told you it wasn't uh, not to tip my hand, but it, it, my MLD is not on uh, on the plane st- uh, on the active plane roster. He is he is someone in management. He's in management. Yes. Stay what? tuned. Okay. All right. Uh, let's say any any key departures, agent free agents, trades, draft picks you want to get into. Uh, Brian Breezy uh, was there was their high pick. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we 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 had, I mean, honestly, talk about a forgettable. I was doing a quiz. I was driving, had a long ass and drive. Took do, him at the end of the first round. Yeah, from doing, Florida. He's already dealing with the calf injury. Was doing a quiz uh, on the draft, and we mm. got got to this pick, and I was like, I have I have zero recollection of who the Saints. Did. Yeah, even as a guy with the number one uh, <laughs> mock draft in the NFL, I wasn't. <laughs> I don't think I had. I don't think I nailed uh, the Brian. They Brazen drafted pick. another late round quarterback in Jake Hayner. I mean, look, but I, I don't mind, you know, their first two picks, uh, no, D the, tackle DN, like that's what they, you should be doing addressing a need. Yeah. Kendra Miller, I think could be interesting. Well, uh, again, they weren't sure about Kamara. So what do you do? You go out and sign Jamal Williams. You, 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 you draft Kendra Miller, who, if you watch TCU at all last year, like he's, he's pretty intriguing. Big guy can move. Uh, we've all see what seen what Jamal Williams can do. Uh, led the league in red zone or in carries inside the five yard line last year. So who is their who is their biggest loss, Ryan? If you had to pick one, Andy uh, Dalton. Well, I think people. I think we're and again when I say people, the the few things that I read and listen to, I think there are definitely people who are overlooking the not that Marquez Callaway and Deontay Hardy and Jarvis Landry were much for them last year. Yeah. But I will be intrigued to see with how this, this uh, receiving core shapes up. And, you know, honestly, I, I think we will wonder if Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton now in Carolina with Bryce young, I, I do wonder if we're going to look at this and be like, wow, they, they paid Derek Carr a whole bunch of money to be just like Andy Dalton. Hmm. And so, yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I think they, they addressed their, their needs. They, they lost obviously a lot on the D line, which they attempted to, to load up on in the draft and a little bit in free agency. I, I j- also great franchise. Let, let's, let's not, let's not talk about what they did with the, uh, the church, <laughs> but let's talk about what they did with Foster Moreau finding cancer, curing cancer, basically. Yeah. Well, great, great organization. The I, Saints. I, I don't have the quotes in front of me, but he was kind of implying that the Raiders missed oh. this uh, diagnosis. Ra- Raiders have had a tough <laughs> off season. Devonte Adams appears to be wanting out again. Yeah. And so I, I don't know. Poor, poor guys. Uh, I would say there's a couple uh, free agent trade guys that maybe like Billy price. I don't, I don't know if that's, it's really going to move the needle for you. Jonathan Abraham. He was that's Raiders trash. So yeah, yeah. he's he, he, uh, t- uh, honey badger. I, I, I kind of forgotten. He's still uh, they're starting strong safety again, Lattimore healthy. If he's healthy 
all 17 games. That obviously is what a made big their, upgrade. But what makes this defense like tick when they're good? It was Cam Jordan and it was it was Latimer. <laughs> like, yeah, no, well, and they, and they didn't have Latimer, and their their pass rush, like I said, it was dead last uh, last year in uh, pass rush win rate. So without that, I'm a little. That's what worried. I'm worried about because you know obviously they they draft Breesy, but like you said, dealing with some injuries. Like, will they actually have an upgraded uh, pass rush? Because if they don't, and they don't have, uh, if Latimer doesn't have the success he's had in the past in the back end, they could be up for a long year. And I think that's that's my biggest issue at the end of the day because I think Dennis Allen's going to come in here with the same old game plan, and if things don't work out again, what are we going to do? Yeah, let's look let's look at their actual odds here up on the screen. Uh, win total set at over under nine and a half. Make playoffs is minus one fifty four. Miss playoffs plus one fifty five. Division plus one thirty. Conference only seventeen to one. Super Bowl forty. To one. No, I'm out. Oh, not all this shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like I'm not trying to be a hater, and obviously, we all it's well documented that I uh, my my model likes the Falcons. This you year. already <laughs> have your you are, Ryan. You already got your prom date. You got the uh, <laughs> my you, prom date. Well, come on. You you got your corsage. You got uh, the limo. You're you're you already got your tux picked out. You're not you're not changing anything. Already you're tested ready to the go. dimmers on the light. <laughs> got the music ready to go. Yeah, you're you're all ready to go. All right, before we get. <laughs> Tonight. Speaking of the music crime, oh, listen to those trumpets blare. Talking about the National Football League. NFL season coming up. What better way to celebrate than by signing up over at Circus Sports for their amazing contests, including Circa Millions, Circus Survivor, $14 million up for grabs. Sign up in Vegas, play from anywhere. We're going to be out there in Las Vegas, August 24th to the 26th. Come out, say hi, hang out at the Circa, a bunch of events. We got like a stadium swim event, uh, cocktail parties. You can come hang out, check out us, uh, check out the live broadcast, come by. Kramer said if you come up to him and you're a Patreon uh, member, he'll shotgun a beer with you. Uh, I'll do a shot, uh, but not with a snorkel mask. <laughs> All right. No, Derek doesn't like snorkel bass. But again, sign up for the contest. I just, the guys I host the Dire Eagles podcast with, we just agreed to do a contest entry together. So go head to head with me, Kramer, thousands of others, millions of dollars up for prizes. Circusports.com for all the details. You expecting me to handle that filthy business through, through our normal proxy? Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're going to take the Eagles every week, aren't you? That might not be a bad strategy, Ryan. They're a pretty good team. I think you missed the window. All right. What do you, uh, so we were discussing the odds. Yep. And it seemed like the ease of schedule crowd has forced every, like everyone knows that everyone knows that the saints have the easiest schedule. Everyone's looked at their division. Everyone's like this division sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I think lock of the century Saints to win the division. Lock of the century Saints over. No, like, again, that's why, that's really? why that's why I thought Tampa Bay was interesting, especially factoring in price. I'm with you. I don't. I think there's a lot of holes you can pick in this New Orleans Saints team. Now, if they were the ones catching long odds to win the division, you know, and, and make the playoffs, sure, maybe maybe they would be interesting. But when you set the win total at nine and a half, and you you make them a, fa- I mean, minus one thirty to win the division, that's like the the mm-hmm. Chiefs are minus one fifty, minus one sixty to win the division. I don't think it's this. No, that I'm was make you. playoffs. Oh, okay. Mi- minus one fifty was make playoffs. But they're they're like uh, what? They plus, are the favorite. It's pl- it's short plus odds. Plus one thirty. Sorry, I thought it was. I thought I saw minus there. Um, yeah, I mean plus one thirty still. That is. That is low. And again, no faith in the head coach. And to your point, like de- I'm Derek looking Carr at the, in a new system. And I'm looking at the records and I'm like, wow, Dennis Allen only coached one year. <laughs> I, we're getting old. Cause I, I, I would, had you put a gun to my head, I would have said, oh yeah, Peyton's been out of the league for two years. Cause I was going to talk to you about a two year suspension with the, uh, <laughs> the, the transpire. Yeah. So, I mean, th- this is a team that only won. Oh no, but Dennis Allen, he also had the three years in Oakland. Sure. But, uh, and I think I'm holding that against him in the same way. I hold it against Josh McDaniels because in this, like, because your second try 
you should be more well equipped and and get off to a better sp- start when you take over from a legend. I, I would say. Is that what you're saying? I, I get it. It was tough to take over from Sean Payton, but the kind of like late in game coaching decisions, the fourth and two stuff, the you know the surrender index, all these like basically people who don't uh, have any understanding of basic go for it. You dumb motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> like Dennis Allen, you're, you're 15 and 38 over four years. It's the same thing I say about quarterbacks. You know, after five years in the league, we kind of know who you are as a quarterback. And I feel like the same applies to to coaches. I mean, like, like Ron Rivera is, is Ron Rivera going to all of a sudden go 13 and four. No, we know who Ron Rivera is. And I think we kind of know who Dennis Allen is. Probably a good angle. I mean, how many how many examples are there of coaches that peak only late? Yeah, I mean, everyone would want to, um, you know, they point to Belichick, but why he, would they point to Belichick? Well, because they were like, oh, he struggled in Cleveland, but that I would, was his first job. That was his first job, and then a second job. How did he do? He did good. Okay. <laughs> But if you, even in Cleveland, he had an eleven and five season, yeah. a couple seven and nine seasons. You could see, and again, he started yeah. out five and eleven first year in New England, then won the Super Bowl the next year. So, I mean, I like how we we kind of are comparing uh, Dennis Allen and Belichick, for probably insulting to to Belichick in some way. No, I, I guess <laughs> I guess I was just using him as an example of a guy who yeah. people would say struggled in his first spot, then figured it out, obviously. But I, I think we should be a little tougher on Dennis Allen because I didn't see a lot of growth as a head coach that first year. It's one thing to not have the win loss record, but you look at the the Pythag win, the the fourth quarter. I mean, they lost a bunch of close games. The turnover differential, like that's shit that coaching the, should be on top of. Yeah, I mean, and you're giving him a quarterback that gives up a lot, surrender a lot of surrender plays. Yeah. Uh, it's it's prob- it's a surrender quarterback matched with a uh, surrender head coach. Honestly, if you're playing blackjack with Derek Carr and Dennis <laughs> Allen, and, I'd like to get 60, insurance. And they get two eights. Are they splitting or are they t- taking a surrender? Well, that's what I mean, Ryan. That's really why. Um, that's why he had to leave Las Vegas. He was staying. Oh, you know, dealer shows a seven. He's got a six. He's not even. He's got sixteen. D- Derek Carr's not even hitting. Supposedly he played blackjack like a real pussy. Uh, I heard he split ten. Had to leave Las Vegas. I heard he split tens. <laughs> I I could respect splitting tens <laughs> almost <laughs> more because of the 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 DJ. Hashtag Dejans only. The, the, the idea that you want more action. No, the, I get it's a bad idea, but. Staying on a 16 against, uh, you know, like a seven showing or anything else because you're too scared you might bust. That's Derek Carr in a nutshell. That's why he throws it away on fourth down. Derek Carr doesn't hit 16 when you should in blackjack. Bra- the brazen Clip nature that. of splitting <laughs> tens. Uh, and also, who can forget? Do you remember when uh, Derek, we found out Derek Carr and John Gruden were neighbors? Oh, yeah. Oh. That must have been real weird moving out. Well, I'm just saying. Like, well, I guess Gruden was still cool with them, but uh, but no, but they they had some weirdness on the uh, some na- I think there were some neighborly weirdness reports. Hmm. Uh, and anyway, I I would I would I would close before we look to look at the schedule. I just my I started with this team as obviously how how can I fade a division favorite who is going to be deploying a first year quarterback on the team and that quarterback is Derek Carr. How can we fade this? Because of all the division favorites, Sean, you list off the the quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. I I mean, even Trevor Lawrence, right? Patrick Mahomes. I'm not going to even say the West with, with the 49ers, Trey Lance, (laughs) Showtime Mahomes, Jalen hurts. Jared Goff. I mean, the NFC is pretty hilarious, and freaking Derek Carr, and even next to Jared Goff's name, no thank you. Yeah, no. Th- Jared Goff can at least drive a sports car. <laughs> Never seen Derek Carr drive a sports car. He's not a gun sh- slinger. There's no pew pew pewing. He's not going to take out a flip phone. Well, Daniel Jones has a has a bunch of uh, Ferraris in his in his garage. Ferrari. <laughs> 
<laughs> I downloaded just a. I I googled. Did you make that louder on your side? Nope. Uh, I get, I googled a super Italian guy saying Ferrari. Ferrari. <laughs> so offensive. <laughs> This is very offensive. One giorno. All right. The Italian Americans of New Orleans and Louisiana are oh, going to be very upset with you over this. All right. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk schedule, Kramer. All right. Happy, uh, happy uh, preseason week two or week one, however you celebrate. Titans on week one. So again, we, we talked about how easy the schedule is off the bat, but we're going to look at a lot of games. <laughs> Sorry, I have to interrupt. Oh, what uh, happened? In the chat, they wrote Karari, uh, Tomcat. <laughs> <laughs> that got me. Oh, is that that's a great nickname? No, that's great. Oh, the, the, Karari. The, the Derek Karari. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Sounds like a dude on forensic uh, class. He owned a small town pizzeria. I feel and like then the, took out a giant life insurance policy. I feel like the only and that's that. where things went wrong for the Karari family. I feel like the uh, I feel like the only Italian man who would wear mascara like Derek, Derek Carr would be like some character playing played by Chris Catan. All right. So, but you're going to look at a lot of these games and you're going to look at these projected spreads. You're going to mm. be like, that's not right. So I uh, sure the win totals projection probably makes their schedule look easy. But again, you dive into it between situational stuff and just in general, uh, maybe a, a teams being uh, undervalued. I, I disagree. I, I in general disagree with their strength of schedule this year. All right, Titans at Panthers, and and I, I don't care if you are going to try to tell me and come at me and say that means I should also think the Falcons' schedule isn't easy. That's not how it works. All right, <laughs> Titans at Panthers on Monday Night Football at Packers back to back road spot. Yep. And then you got the Bucks at home, which, by the way, quick look ahead: the Bucks is a sandwich spot. It's the only home game, but in a five-game stretch, which is absolutely bonkers. And and, and uh, even zoomed out further, two of their first six are at home. That's it. So Titans at Panthers on Monday Night Football. No one asked for that game to be on Monday Night Football. At Packers, Buccaneers at home. Honestly, the home games—they're laying three and a half. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean that's uh, crazy. Uh, Mike Vrabel versus Dennis Allen. I think that's Todd a Bowles fun game. attacking Derek Carr. Yeah, I, I mean, did you I, did you mention that uh, you always have the offensive line rankings? Yeah, for the Saints uh, are, are they still getting love in that in that category? Yeah, like ETR ETR ranks them eleventh. Um, okay. So I, I think they they have a fair to middling offensive line. So my take here was obviously I'm going to give the like the. The idea that they have an advantage on Monday Night Football against Bryce Young makes sense to me. I don't know if I'm at a point where I want to say they Bryce Young could be good enough to split against this defense. But the other road game, I'm going to mark definitely as a loss. Well, and Panthers will be coming off their big Week One win against the Falcons, <laughs> so it could be a letdown spot. For oh Bryce. wow, Bryce could be zero uh, and two at this point in the season. I I. You know, obviously, he probably has he probably has more wins in the Georgia Dome than uh, Desmond Ritter. Wow, we've turned into. Uh, I mean, why why is Desmond Mercedes, Ritter catching, catching some Mercedes slide? Benz Dome? I, I I don't love the spot against the Titans to open the year. Obviously, no, I think we're it's a we're, tough spot. Uh, we're Titans guys. So yeah, I I guess I'll go. And then the home game against the Bucks. Boy, if this was Tom Brady, saw, saw a Baker interview. I'm back, baby. <laughs> Baker was calm. He was Baker's mature. Like a drunk guy. <laughs> He's just like a bun. He's like he's like your uncle when he's, you see him once a year at the beach. And he's, he's just like, he's, hey. he's fired up about the QB competition. You know who he is? He, he's your uncle. So I'll just use a person that was used to exist in my real life. He's your <laughs> girlfriend's uncle. Who, when you show up to a, a, an event, he walks over and ices you with a smeared off <laughs> ice. That's who Baker Mayfield. Jug. Is. All right, I'm going two and two. All right. I, are we, so you're giving them the, you're giving them the bucks game because you are higher on the bucks. Yeah. But I think it is a, it's a division game at home. I, I would probably split them with the bucks. Although they are playing the bucks when you want to play them probably late. You don't have to deal with that uh, September Florida heat. The, I think they, I think I really like them against the Panthers. I think the Packers. So I'm grading the Panthers as a win, and I think they get one between the Titans, Packers, and Bucks. But I I do like the Titans week one. Bucks beat them twice last year. Yeah, that was weird. Um, 
They split. I think I have to give them a split. So I'll go two and two as well. Okay. Wait. Yeah, two and two. They lose the Titans and Packers. All right. Then we have at Patriots at Texans. A gr- absolutely brutal back to back spot <laughs> here. Uh, then you have Jags on Thursday night football, short week. Obviously, we're probably going to take them versus the Jags. And you have at Colts mm. to close out this quadrant. Oof. This is tough for me because I'm gonna have to probably give them a little bit of love here because so obviously yeah, I hate the Colts. Non-conference road game for the Jags on Thursday night. That's it. Doesn't get any harder than that. No, um, that, that's a win. And then Let's you know you are on the road, but Texans and Colts. You're playing two rookie quarterbacks, or I guess in your case, Ryan uh, Gardner Minshew will be playing. But um, yeah, I think at least two and two, maybe maybe three and one, but I'll go two and two. I think they, I think they could also mess up either the Texans or Colts. I, I just think the, the coaching um, edge between Belichick and Dennis Allen is too big. So I I'm going two and two, two and two. I mean, Bill Belichick versus Derek Carr, <laughs> where would sign me up for the Patriots there. Yeah. Also, uh, is it a letdown? The Patriots, by the way, that's a single home game and a three or four game stretch for them. So uh, they should be getting up for that. I'll, I will go. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not the fanciest uh, saints. Uh, I think I have to go three and one here. Mm. Okay. I think we're going to be talking about like, Whoa, look at the saints. Then they take on the bears at Vikings by week at Falcons lions. I'm going to, they're going to drop the home I, again. You're the, the schedule, like nugget creators are going to be like, yeah, look at all these home, these dome games they got. I don't necessarily like them in either of these dome spots. Again, well, there's three, three in a row. Well, it, it, and the Lions, yes. Well, four. In, oh, we get the Bears game in there, yes. Yes, or sorry, all four are dome games. Uh, I think this is where they go three and one. I think they can, they can hang with the NFC North, and then I think they can. Uh, obviously, I think they can sweep the Falcons. So I'll go three and one. You, really, you're gonna you're just trolling. Yeah, you sweeping the Falcons. Yeah, I don't think the Falcons sweeping are gonna the be Falcons. Good. <laughs> the Falcons are, you know, they're you're, a poor man's New Orleans Saints. You got the Saints going twelve and five. You're on your way. Where are we at? Seven and five. Okay. So no, they're not Jesus, gonna go five and, and zero. Five. They're not gonna go five and zero in their last. All right, let's finish this out. What did I give you? I didn't. No, you didn't, Ryan. You're, they, you're they scared. Dro- they drop. I think they drop the road games. Oh, I I'm not super high on the lions, but this is a game. I actually kind of like for them, hmm. especially with the spread. Uh, yeah. I, you know what? Lions is a road favorite. You like that here. So I had them go three and one the last stretch, yep. right? I am going to give them a one and three. Oh, okay. So I, you, I, you got them uh six and six. I got them seven and five closing it out. Yeah. Panthers. Giants at Rams on Thursday night football at Bucks and Falcons to close out the year. Oof. So I think they can win the Falcons and then probably the Giants. Oh, what have the Giants won a game in your predictions? My model is not kind of the Giants, oh, right? Your model is and maybe I should have worked that model. Maybe I'll you know what? I'll go back and make that last stretch two and two. Cause I, I do like them to go. It, all right, we got a trivia question. We yeah. talk about how easy the schedule is. How many times are the Saints ske- uh, favored by more than four points? Schedule uh, is literally on the screen. Zero. Yeah. I got him. Um, I'll go. I'm going to go back and make that last quadrant two and two. Oh, and, really? And then I'll revising make, history. And then I'll make this three and two. Nine and eight feels about right for the Saints team. I don't, especially because you're getting. Uh, Picking with your feelings now, huh? No. Um, I think you're a gut handicap. I am a gut handicap. Oh, and so my, <laughs> my gut's saying, yeah, I, I just don't. Yeah. I don't see it. All right. So I have them six and six. Let's see who, let me I, help me with the chat needs to help me. How let's see, where's D Bettis? Cause he's usually really negative. I, I would say if you put the schedule back up on the screen, Look, obviously, I don't think any of the, these games, like, like none of these games, are, are greater than three point spreads. I, I don't think they're a lock to win any of them. Obviously, if I'm splitting with the Falcons, they win that game, and I'm splitting with the Bucks, so they drop that game. 
Rams Thursday night. I have to kind of default, give that to the Rams, even if it is Stetson Bennett. And I'll say they split the Panthers and giants. Actually, no, did I say they were going to sweep the Panthers? Shit. I did. All right. So I'll go three and two. So you have them also going nine and eight, that, right? That, that feels right. And my model agrees with my under feelings. nine and a half wins is just too high. I'm going to say miss playoffs as well at plus one fifty five Cause I think nine and eight, eight and nine kind of feel uh, more right. I certainly don't like them to win the division at that short number. What about you, Ryan? Well, Sean and fun fact. So since we have now finished the first division, mm. we've put a, a pin in it. I will add a tab to the uh, sheet again, patreon.com. Yeah, access to the podcast. sheets. I'll, I'll put a tab in there that just like creates like an NFL standings type situation. So you can see the uh, predictions in, in the form of NFL standings, like our brains are trained to see them. <laughs> and you, you would see in this situation that I have the Falcons at 10 and 7 winning the division and the Saints 9 and 8 coming in second place probably will be flirting with the playoff spot. So I don't know if I'm, I'm going to run to fade the, the or take I, the missed I, I like playoffs. Get, I get, I like getting the plus number there. And I came into this with a thesis of this team's going to suck, but it does seem like their floor is relatively high. And based on the things we talked about, a little luck regression, a little schedule regression, a little injury, like key injury regression. And one, two wins seems about right. And I think in the NFC, nine wins, nine, nine wins is going to be, you're going to be in the hunt for a playoff. You know spot what? Eight. I'm going to, I'm going to knock them down one more win. Eight, really? And, eight and nine. Yeah. Cause I'm really looking at this. In schedule. what world was I going to come in here higher on the saints than you? I think they, I think they are better than they were last year. They were seven and 10 last year. They're, they're going to go eight and nine this year. That feels right. So not two wins. Just I don't one see. Win. Yeah. I just don't see 10 wins in this team's future. How many, what, what is Latimer worth? How many wins over the course of a season is he worth? No, Stability, I mean, obviously, key, obviously yeah. cornerback is an elite well, top uh, position. level guy that is in lives rent free in Mike Evans head. Those are some of the fun battles. I mean, we, we, these are the things we're going to lose as the old guys retire, Sean Latimer and Evans just fighting on the field. Paying homage to Cortland Finnegan and Andre Johnson, some of the great receiver DB fights over the years. Oh yeah. If you've not, if you're younger and you have not seen Andre Johnson and Cortland Finnegan, oh that's an old like, Just go watch the highlights. It, it takes place over the course of a game, and who can forget Josh Norman <laughs> bringing a bat to, to assault Odell Beckham on the field, WWE style. Oh, I yeah, totally forgot. La- about that. Latimer and uh, Mike Evans. That it, that's one of the best one's going right now. Cause it's not just talk. Like they, they punch each other. Every, every get time they play, there's punches thrown, which also very stupid to throw a punch when someone's wearing a helmet. <laughs> very stupid. All right, Ryan, what kind of, so I'm on under nine and a half wins miss playoffs plus plus one fifty five. Chris Olave though, uh, 35 to one most receiving yards. A lot of that coming in garbage time. Ooh. Shout out to the chat. I think Tom cat was the one who had that one. That's a the, good line. The garbage man. And we just used like uh, Ferrari. what's the Sesame street ca- character that lives in the trash. Oh, can? Come on, Ryan. What's the name of it? Oscar. Uh, How Oscar, do you not Oscar know that? The grouch. Yeah. That's we get the, the car garbage, <laughs> garbage, the grouch, <laughs> garbage, the grouch. Uh, so yeah, those are, those are the, that's what I'm looking at. Eight and nine. I'm glad I knocked him down to eight and nine. Cause that feels it's going to be slightly well, negative. And it makes any sense. path for Carr to win the MVP at fifty to one. Uh, no, one hundred percent no. And so you you are gonna sit you're gonna sit on miss playoffs. Yeah, and yeah. especially at plus one fifty five. Um, you know, see, my issue is, I if the conference is weak again, you're gonna have a team straggle in, and it makes the most sense that the team would straggle in from this division because their schedule is easy. Maybe it's the Panthers, maybe it's the Saints, but I, if I had to bet on a team making the playoffs that didn't deserve to make the playoffs as a wild card, it's probably coming out of this division. All right, uh, I mean, I, I think it the the props that were out 
for like Jamal Williams. I know there were Jamal Williams touchdown props being offered at some of the prop well, sites. Mo- yeah, he has most uh most rushing touchdowns, fifty to one. Of course, he led the league last year. A lot of one yard touchdowns for the Lions. Could he do it again this year, Ryan? That feels the price is probably incorrect. I it does seem like he's legitimately gonna be third behind Kamara and uh, Kendry Miller in terms of well and Taysom usage. Hill. I mean, dude, they Taysom Hill's their goal line back. If they didn't have so Taysom, no, I wouldn't. Yeah, if they didn't have Taysom Hill, you could talk me into Jamal Williams as a fun long shot for most rushing touchdowns. Uh, to me, I would if I was, I would be more likely to play Chris Olave. What what was your price on Chris Olave to lead the league in re- receiving yards? Thirty five to one. Oh, interesting. Okay. So receptions is also 35 to one hmm. to me. That's more interesting with, with Derek Carr. I, All right. I'll play both twist your arm. No, I mean, cause you're right. I can see the case for uh cause he can carry a 30 plus percent target share. Yeah. And, and I, you know, well, this is, this is, I don't trust that it's going to be down the field. <laughs> that's true. But again, he's yeah. I don't know his yards per catch, even with uh, Andy Dalton was pretty good. So that's kind of um, yeah, kind of where I was at. All right, so if you go to the the top two market, uh, obviously, and it's it's annoying because a lot of these I don't know if you noticed this, Sean, but a lot of these markets got pulled off hmm. with the Kamara news for whatever reason, which is odd to me because I think we were discussing he's not worth. I don't think he's worth him missing three games isn't worth shit. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have the price in front of me, but I I would. But a, but a Bucks uh, Saints one two could be fun. Okay, you're gonna go Bucks Saints, obviously. I would go Falcons. <laughs> Wait, you Saints. like the Falcons this year? Ron? Falcons Saints. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. <laughs> I want to bet. I want to bet exact outcome on the Falcons seven and ten, because them having oh. three <laughs> seven and ten seasons with Arthur Smith would just be Chef's kiss, just perfect. I, I, and and like, you know, on a very serious note, I'm not high on this team. I'm not high on Derek Carr. I would never, I would, I don't, I don't think he's going to get hurt because he's not a risky guy. You can get Derek Carr to lead the division in passing yards at plus 105. Alternatively, Mm. I don't know who you would take. It's not Bryce Young. It's not Desmond Ritter. Maybe it's Baker Mayfield at six to one, Sean. (laughs) But Woke up feeling dangerous. Sorry, that's passing touchdowns. Passing touchdowns yeah. or yards? Yards is minus two twenty five. Not interested. Yeah, in I was gonna argument. say yards feels like a layup. Um, well, minus two twenty five is a layup. So if you think there's value in there, it could still be a good bet. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm All not right, that so invested. Con- in Derek continuing Carr. along, I again, I'm not, I'm not necessarily the highest on this guy, but Chris Olave seems to have a very easy path to also lead his division in all of those counting stats. And I, I was a little bit surprised to find out that you can get him plus plus one fifty to lead in receiving yards. You're, you're basically it's verse Evans and Godwin. it's a similar bet. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would probably just sit with you on the receptions bet for the league. At thirty-five okay. to one, that's your only other bet. I, again, I I I was fully prepared to come in here with some some fiery uh, Jamal. Will- they had a Jamal Williams touchdown prop. It's now gone. What was the number? Six and a half. So you would like under. to go? Oh no, under. Okay, I'll add that for you. They it won't come back now, will it? Yeah. Why wouldn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I I'm confident that would come back, right? Okay. So you got Jamal Williams under six and a half touchdowns, Chris Olave thirty-five to one most receptions. Um, yeah, I, I see the case for Jamal Williams. I guess I'm, yeah, eh, I, I'll, I'll stay away. I mean, obviously, I just I think Kendrick I, Miller could end up being the second. I I don't understand. The more I got into this team, the more I was confused as to why they signed Jamal Williams. It's almost like they panicked. Well, they, I think they didn't know how long they were going to not have Kamara. Right. Sure. I, and again, Taysom Hill is a super fun guy to draft in fantasy. Again, he's going to get the goal line rushing work. Like the whole point of drafting these tight ends late in best ball is so that you can randomly have those games where he gets a touchdown or two. 
but you're getting a, a, a tight end who they said they're going to involve more in the passing game, and you're getting rushing touchdown upside. You you really should have some some Taysom Hill in your best ball. Share Will Taysom time. Hill be on the Saints next year? Um, I don't know. Yes. They can't get rid of him for two more years. They keep restructuring <laughs> his contracts, and if they cut him next year, it's like seventeen dead million in dead cap. So He's getting paid. We're, dude. we're not getting. Taysom Hill is okay, getting right. paid. What would the Taysom Hill r- touchdown prop if they put one out? All-purpose touchdowns. What would they set it at? Yeah. I think they'd set it at seven and a half. No, they'd set it at four and a half, and I'd take the over. If you see a Taysom Hill uh, touchdown prop, tag me because I'm in. Tell me where you're getting it. I just I they'll I, probably they'll probably have it late in the season. I just want to see Taysom Hill throw past the Derek Carr. <laughs> well, that's what Derek Carr said he wanted. So maybe look for the Derek Carr receiving touchdowns. All right, Ryan. Time for everyone's favorite part, the New Orleans Saints. M L D. Nice little music we got here now. Dial it down just a hair. Nah, it's, it's perfect. For me. The New Orleans Saints MLD. Give me General Manager Mickey Loomis. Oh, phew. <laughs> who, of course, as we know, Ryan was involved in the wiretapping scandal. <laughs> Federal prosecutors were just made aware of Loomis's eavesdropping device, uh-huh. uh, allegedly set up 10 years ago. This is in 2012. Now the old GM Randy Mueller installed the device in 2020 to monitor. Oh, the old guy did it. Well, he did it to monitor the Saints coaches' uh, game day communications. But when Mickey Loomis became the GM in 2022, the device was rewired to monitor only opposing teams' coaching staffs. 2012. No, 2022. That's when oh. he started. There was a switch. And the switch access offense and defense. When Randy was there, it was the Saints offense and defense. When Mickey was there, it changed over. So it was the visiting offense and defense. The device remained in place until 2005 when Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans. ESPN reports. Oh, okay. 2002. You said 2022. That's why I was. 2002. Yeah, yeah. I was... Okay. But yeah, Mickey Loomis, is, uh, again, you don't want to go too deep on the Saints. <laughs> What do you got, Ryan? Who's your MLD? Oh, I, you scared me because you said it was a non-player, and I also went non-player. I went into the the office of uh, public relations, Mr. Greg Bensel, Ooh. senior vice president of communications. <laughs> Been with the team for 24 years. That's awesome. Great to see that. Well, you know what happened? Oh, I, I lost my quote here. The the if you remember. The Catholic Church has done some horrible shit, and in the city of New Orleans, the archdiocese there are there are season ho- ticket holders. This was a cover story of the Sports Illustrated. They were basically boycotting this guy, Amond, because of his involvement in horrible shit that the church got involved in. Well, here's where it gets weird, and let me uh, let me pull this quote back up because I I, do, I don't want to get this wrong again. Still with the team, much much like. Uh, much like Mickey Loomis, Mickey Loomis still with the team too. He was he was uh, involved in the wiretapping scandal and Bounty Gate. Still still around. So, uh, an SI review of case files and public records suggests that the team was significantly more involved in the archdiocese's response to the sexual abuse crisis than it ha- it had acknowledged. When questioned by SI, the Saints conceded that a top executive had advised the church on PR months before the release of the list, apparently shifting the timeline, uh, blah, 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 blah. Well, guess who that PR member who helped the church out was Greg Bensel. Mm, He's Mm. still there. Mr. Bensel did receive a call from the archbishop during the summer, (laughs) asking Mr. Bensel for his opinion. What a a hilarious move by the church. Like, all right, you know, we make problems go new Orleans is just such a corrupt city in general. What are the saints doing? They're the guys you, this is like the, the fire department getting 300 K from the circa. How is this realistic enough for this to actually like, why is this, why is there enough glue here? Well, this actually, they're picking up the phone to call the saints to be like, Hey, can you guys give us some advice on this? (laughs) Mr. Bensel did receive a call from the archbishop during the summer asking Mr. Bensel for his opinion on the best way to handle the press and negative series of media articles that were being written. Uh, 
Bensel suggested that the archbishop call f- for and meet with the local newspaper's editorial bo- board. That's their denial. <laughs> That's all you, you that, anyway, it turned out to be a lot worse. And then, so yeah, I, I was like, this is an interesting story. Again, sometimes you have to ask questions. Maybe Sean Payton and the saints team is being punished. Maybe that's why they haven't been good in a while because they were uh, do it working with the devil. And then I saw this motherfucker still working for the team. How do you not, how do you not distance yourself from this stuff? So I know in the spirit of this, this award, it's meant to be someone who would gamble. Uh, it's kind of, but, or participate in DJ activities. Well, I would imagine if you're willing to take a call from the, the Pope in this situation or the archdiocese, <laughs> you're willing to take a call from a lot of people. So, and this would also would be a hilarious way to, to clean house. Mickey Loomis and uh, Greg Bensel are just firing off college. I mean, Mickey college Loomis football bets from the Mickey Loomis. If he's listening in on other teams' conversations, what better way to get well, inside information to get down on some games? And do you remember? I, I I feel like, and I I I I stumbled across this in the research, but I feel like there was this was like playoff games, right? Were were there not? Uh, oh, it was like two two full seasons. So yeah. But I, I may I'll, I'll have to day I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll circle back on it. But I'm pretty sure this resurfaces more recently. The, the them listening in on their opponents. Not this is you know, again cheating organization. Yeah, they I will mean not go they over their they though. claim it was from 2002 to 2005. Um, so actually they never made it to the playoffs during those years. Oh, well then, they who did cares? get they did get into the playoffs in 2006, lost in the uh, conference championship game. And we talked about all this cheating and they all, didn't they also have bounty gate? Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. And also Mickey Loomis led uh, organization. Are we sure Sean Payton wasn't suspended? Like, (laughs) like Michael Jordan style suspension. I'm going to go retire for a couple of years. All right. Recapping our best bets. I got him eight, nine Kramer, nine and eight, both on the under nine and a half. I'm on this playoffs plus one fifty five. I do like Chris Olave fantasy. Um, and Taysom Hill fantasy, but uh, most receiving touchdowns for Olave, most receptions for Olave, both thirty-five to one. Kramer's co-signing the most receptions, thirty-five to one. Jamal Williams under six and a half touchdowns. Kramer's MLD uh, PR guy, first first PR guy nominated. Greg Bensel. He's gonna look great on. And my graphic. my uh, MLD is the Saints GM Mickey Loomis. Which is that the first double suit? Yeah, no players, both uh, double suits. You got to go double suits for the Saints. Just such a. And New Orleans is just a corrupt town. That's how they do things down in the Big Easy. Hey, thank you as always for tuning in. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Toss us a nice rating review. 32 team previews. We got a ton more coming. Uh, we got a special guest, a uh, bonus uh, former NFL player checking in this week. And then uh, we're also going to be at the Fantasy Football Expo. If you're going to be out there uh, this uh, coming up weekend in Canton, come by, say hi. We're hosting the Friday night party. And again, uh, support the Patreon, uh, sportsgamingpodcast.com slash Patreon. Get in on the thousand dollar NFL win total contest. A lot of fun. Sportsgamingpodcast.com slash Patreon. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean. Second the Money Green. He's Ryan. Yeah, got a lot more questions about the Saints. Kramer, let it ride.